And this is a big one, is foot position. Where do you want your foot in relation to your knee? I personally like if I drew a, 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 a plumb line from here, here, to a little farther back. So I don't want you guys way out in front because as you're in this position, you drive back, and that's not what I'm looking to do, drive this way. I'm trying to get as much torque as I bring the bar down in a vertical pattern. So as I come down into position, I want my feet right about here. I'm gonna reach out, kind of rock my shoulders. I'm gonna get here and I wanna pin those shoulder blades, get into a good position. I have a terrible habit of lifting my head off because I like to watch the bar. Uh, that's not a good habit. If anything, I don't wanna like overly press my head, but I wanna kind of keep it just touching the pad. So as I bring the bar down, or sorry, I wanna try to create a little bit of arch, draw on the trunk, big breath in, bring the bar and then drive it up. As you're doing it, I'm really squeezing, trying to get some ro in, uh, external rotation to activate the lats, bring it down, and then drive. So, for every person, it's gonna be a little different because we all have different anthropometrical ratios. So, why don't the first person will get down, strongest people in the world, start with 10 reps. Let's rock and roll, we'll get some. And we'll kind of coach them up on the fly. If you ever feel unstable on the bench press, anybody? Like when you get up, you feel like you're rocking a little? Just widen your feet. Cool. Think about dead bugs. You guys just got doing dead bugs. That idea of keeping an arch, but then also drawing the trunk in. All right, 10 reps. Looks pretty good, nice and textbook. All right. Question. Yep. Uh, from the he's these for baseball lots. Yeah. On a bar like this, I noticed when he came down, it was kind of like the bottom part of the bar was in mm -hmm. chest. Do you rotate it all? Uh, I try to get the bar nice and flat. So that's kind of playing with this angle. As I bring the bar down, I want to be flat. I see people bring it back and they want like the part touching. But for me, I try to kind of play with it. But I'm also trying to play with like a neutral grip. So whatever feels best on your, on your wrist, especially if you're real tight wrists. But for me, ideally, I want to bring it down nice and flat. Now, what's the purpose? Here you can go, I'll just talk. But what would be the purpose for rotating bars or putting different bars like this in this? Changing the stimulus. So you're going to see a lot of people when we put on weight start to rock a little bit and they're going to be a little unsteady with that inter and intramuscular coordination. So we can continue to drive adaptation by changing the implements. Also, really a lot easier on the elbows and the shoulders, that neutral grip. So you might have athletes that are banged up, shoulders, baseball players, whatnot, football players. For me personally, that ability to punch with my thumbs up, kept my elbows in, which allowed me to be here. If anything, this was more beneficial than this was. Cool. Quick question on Yep. Your, your foot position was good. Uh, oh. Was he a little? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not wrapped around the axle on like toes forward or any of that. If anything, I just want you to be wide enough to be stable. And I'm always kind of looking about, uh, you know, keeping a good arch, good trunk position, nice and stable. I'm more concerned with rocking the shoulders, pinching the shoulder blades, bringing it down and accelerating the bar. So when you, got, when you watch people bench, ideally uh, there's some definite advantages for anthropometrical ratios. Like if you're short in your humerus head and long in your forearm, you're usually a pretty good bencher. It also makes your biceps look bigger. So like Big James, uh, super short, but like I'm pretty short too. I'm not real long this way, but I got long forearms. So like it helps to be a good bencher. It also helps to have, make your biceps look bigger. So like Tom, his like humerus head is like way longer than his forearm. I'm like, that's why your biceps look small. That and your dreadlocks. Sucks to suck. Plant your feet. <laughs> the, you want, I tend to or have been trained to squeeze that bench. Yeah. So is that okay to squeeze yeah. that bench? So what I think about doing is when I create my arch, like I try to like rock my shoulders into an arch and then I pull my abs and I keep that like dead butt position and try to compress everything. And when I do it, I try to squeeze everything and really try to crank that whole body in. So I look at the bench press as a whole body movement. And remember, 
reps and opportunity and all these different challenging posture and position in the vertical push, uh, sorry, horizontal push allows for greater tensile strength, you know, more just finding different ways to replicate challenge posture and position. So the heels don't have to be down. Yeah. Some people dependent on how they feel. Like uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I've seen guys like pinch all the way back this way. Right. For me, I feel really unstable that way, but a lot of guys like it. Yeah. For me, as long as the feet aren't out really far so that when you drive back, the bar doesn't do what we call the athletic bench press, yeah. which is where people shoot their hips. And then the big thing I, I'm not a, I, I really fucking despise is the bouncing. And I see kids do this all the time where they're like, ooh, and it breaks the sternum. Uh, I broke my xiphoid process and it sticks to one side. I'm not sure if it was benching or what, but like that's a big thing I think about. It probably, I think it actually probably got from getting punched in the, in the, in the chest, but uh, yeah. So, and then the bigger issue too, when you bring it down and the bar bounces, it kind of gets to a position where you catch and that's when you blow pecs. So other big thing too is like thinking about like tricep strength being the greatest determining factor for bench press. So are you a chest heavy guy or are you a tricep guy? So this is more predominant tricep and I always want to work the triceps. That and it just looks way cooler to have big triceps. Once again, from a baseball perspective, you a lot of floor press. Yeah. So what's your kind of take? I really dig floor press. Floor press uh, for me was the best accessory, uh, accessory bench press deal for me. Uh, the reason I like it is as I brought the bar down, uh, one, I never had to worry about anybody bouncing, and two, as I brought the bar down, I could really focus on a vertical forearm, so like you can almost coach the bench in the bottom. So for years, we t have always taught the bench press off of the floor, because one, you can get the tactile feedback of really like getting my shoulders into position, and then I can pull the legs out of it, because that way people aren't shooting their hips, I can work about pulling my trunk in, and then they bring the bar down, I can get them to stop, I can see the exact path of the bar, and kind of make sure that this is a good 90, the position here at 45, and then teach them to drive in a straight line. So for me, floor press was like, such a big deal. I would, uh, um, there were two things that I saw made my bench press go up, my floor press, and my neutral grip dumbbells. So flat bench, neutral grip dumbbells, real heavy and floor press were, and then close grips were what I did for most of my upper body stuff. Is it because of tricep focus? Uh, it just, it, it, it just for me, like, yeah, I saw a huge carryover in a neutral grip bench with dumbbells, floor press, and like those three were like my money makers. So I didn't necessarily get stronger for more bench press, I got stronger from those accessories. And then weighted dips was my other one. Got it. So I, uh, I, I had a little matrix when I played, which was, uh, I could, uh, it was bench 405, squat 495 um, for five sets of five in under 10 minutes. And then it was 10 reps on the pull up with 90 pounds between my waist. And then like, so I, I had all these training matrix that I would use and like, that was one of them. So, yeah. No, no, we bench with uh, straight bars. I just really like the, uh, the group to use some different stuff when we guys come here. So what's neat is we got a lot of different bars and a lot of different kind of things here that are a little outside the normal, so I'd rather you guys use everything. So. Does that have any impact on what you had up here? That, yeah. Okay. yeah. You're talking about the metrics before. Did you try to, I guess, do a little reverse engineering from football and then sort of like say, like, if I can hit five by five within 10 minutes, that's close to a football game? Or? Yeah, well, that and also I knew I had like the uh, base level, or sorry, like the like my conditioning had progressed to a point where I could handle really heavy loads and like quickly and be able to move them fast and be able to have short recoveries. And like when I was able to do that, I knew I was ready to go back and play. But I also knew that the strength that I had at that point was the strength I needed to be successful. Anything that went past that would take away from all the other stuff. So I remember my rookie or second year, I had this idea that I was gonna get as strong as I could. So I got up to like 325 pounds. I benched like five and a quarter for reps and I was so fucking big. And I remember I went out to play and I was playing a right or a, I think I was playing left tackle. I remember I sat back and the dude like ran around me and I was like, whoa. And I felt like a big planet with like little planets orbiting. And I remember thinking like, I'm gonna get fucking cut. I'm way too big. And I, I spent like the next six weeks just like eating salads and running. And I came back at like 306 and like I played, that's where I played the rest of my career. So it was like a really interesting moment in my life where I was like, like you could see your whole life. Like, yeah, I call it the, um, uh, Harry Stamper from Armageddon moment where like he before he hits the button his whole life goes between his eyes in a split second that happened to me 
So. But couldn't you, in theory, make that mass, newly acquired mass, faster? Uh, so maybe. Like maybe. Expensive, so like learn to coordinate that new mass, obviously. Do you yeah, but, uh, but, but for me, there was a, a, a point where I was, uh, I was not able to be as fast as I needed to be Got at the it. size of Got which it. I was. Okay. So I was, yeah. It's kind of like fighters in weight classes. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like all of a sudden you see them fight at like, you know, in the 150s, once, you know, and then it's just a little bit. Then you see them in 180s, and all of a sudden they're like, man, that guy's just a little slower. Same deal. So say you have people, like, say you have, like, you want to work on that horizontal push, right? And you were talking about floor press, right, as a great one. Um, what if I maybe don't have that an athlete that's maybe strong enough for that? So like I have a 76 year old lady. She uh, really wants to like be able to like dumbbell floor press. Okay. So dumbbell floor press is another one of our favorites because uh, if they have problems, they can bail and kind of correct it, like have them bring it down so they touch and be like, hey, there's, uh, there, you're lacking symmetry, one elbow's in different position. Remember vertical forearms, I want to press. And you can do some really cool isometrics, like bring it in, lock into position, have them do it for reps. Some, like, she has no cartilage in her knees, so we're really trying to like help her build some just strength. Like, yeah. She just wants to well, it. if you think about uh, strength training helps with like, um, you know, motor unit recruitment, uh, you know, and then like a bit of aerobic work, like mitochondrial density, keep motor units firing. Like you can really stare, you know, starve off aging and that. Yeah. Well, and it, like uh, that's what when I was listening, I was like, okay, like that makes sense with her. Like not just put her on a bench. Yeah. Like I would rather just have. Her well, off. well, here's so just so a really interesting test for uh, older people is like making them get on the floor, and then when they get up, seeing how many points of contact they need to get up. So there's a direct like relationship between points of contact. Like, do they like get up and it's like this, or they get up pretty easily? I don't. She doesn't even get up without assistance. So, she but just getting her assistance to help get up. I think she's she hasn't been as confident to get up on her own, and so I think like maybe even building that confidence would be really good. Like, she always is seeking a hand. Yeah. I just want to be able to give her some good pushing yeah. movements that I think will cool. help her. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, you can even do like incline like pushes, like we like set bars at different heights and do like the incline push stuff. Incline push ups with her, she, she really likes that. Cool. Um, All right, who's up? You can do it. How, how many you got? Do not look at the weight. It's way lighter than you think it is. I already looked at it, it's okay. Set a 10. She'll do it, set a 10. There you go. Oh, 10 reps. All day. Up there. Uh, keep your feet planted. Really dig in. Up there. Good, you got it. Just the piggies. <laughs> She's got it. Don't help her. You just get, just the piggies. Up, 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 up. Uh, there you go. Good. You got it. Nice. Uh, I want you to tell that's PR. That is. That's good. <laughs> I was like, Harry, Harry's in there giving you emotional support. I'm like, don't touch it. Ah, uh, dude, I, I fucking hate that. I'm like lifting and then I go to touch it. I'm like, don't touch it, fucking bar. There's a girl, Aaron, and she'll be like, don't touch it. I'm like, girl, I'm not helping. I'm not touching it. Do you have a set rule on that? Like, so I tell my kids, like, don't touch the fucking bar unless it's. Yeah, unless you go. Like, yeah. Even if it stalls, man, like a little bit. Oh, there you go. Powerlifting mama. That's great. We really need one of these bars. They're so cool. They're not expensive either. They're super. They're not very expensive. People are like, "Oh, did you make that?" I'm like, "Dude, it's cheaper for me to buy the stuff than it is to make it." Yeah. I love it. Nice. All right. What's up? You guys good? You want to do any more? Uh, All right. Let's do a little bit more. <laughs> oh, they did? They did 185? Here, grab some tens. We'll throw some tens on. really tight through your lower back. Are you overarching too much? Uh, I, I tend to squeeze my 
So really I always try to get like a good arch, but then what I try to, it's so weird. I like try to arch, but then I also try to push and flatten it at the same time, which I think is that like opposing force, which for me is helpful. towards your belly. And I was like kind of opposite. Ah, uh, yeah, so, like so, so the idea is that like there's kind of a rowing motion. The problem is, is as you're coming up, if you start doing this and the bar goes back into your shoulders and that's where you saw more pet crushers. So as we bring the bar down, if I can like mentally think about pushing it away from me, it'll tend to go in a straighter line. So like what I don't want to do is bring the bar down and then do this. Because then it like, I, like when I saw people rupture and tear pecs and when I hurt my own pec is when I got here and I got stuck and the bar went back. So as long as I was in here and I was driving uh, there and it was more tricep, I was fine. That's when I, I hurt my pec and I saw people blow pecs out it was usually when they was like uh, this way. So just that cue of pushing it towards the belly is not necessarily your, you know, yeah. they're like, it's Wait. No, no, no. <laughs> like, it, as you bring the bar down, as you touch, you tend to drive this way because most people tend to row it over their face. So as they push it away, it tends to go in a straight line. So it's just a cue that I used. And uh, unfortunately, like most cues, they're user specific. And like generalist cues, like when, like you, there, there's no single one cue that gets everybody in the right place. So what I always try to do is get people to push a bar in a straight line because it's the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So they bring the bar down, straight line push. So I have novice people that want a power lift. And of course, you know, I set them up and a lot of times they'll come down and instead of coming, like I don't know how to explain that rowing where you come down well, here, they, they want to come here yeah. and do this. Or they well, want to turn their elbows up. Well, so, so what will happen is, is uh, if you lack tricep strength, then what people do is they, is they do right. this and then they bring it down so it goes all into the delt in the right. front of the top of the chest. So to bring the elbow here, you have to be strong in the lats and also strong in the, in the tricep. Right. So that takes tra tra uh, training and time and also technique, opportunity, reps. So what you can do is you can have them bring the bar down and pause and then have them fix the position and then have them drive out or even put markers say like, hey, I want you to push my to this position. Right. So do you think, Starting them off with this to kind of get that motion, it won't hinder. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, push ups, I really like dumbbells. I use a ton of dumbbells. Uh, I really like positions on dumbbells, slight inclines. You know, we do like a slight incline, slight decline, flat. I really like dumbbells as a great accessory. Uh, I think sometimes with the straight bar on the bench, people tend to like get into a weird position they, and like all of a sudden you bring it down, one elbow or flares in here. This allows them to keep that nice tight position. Right. A lot of times they'll get the going down part and then of course they struggle and they push their yeah. elbows out. Well, that comes from your, your body, like um, your body's pretty interesting. Like it'll all, like water will always find its level. Your body will always find the strongest thing. Like that's why when you see people squat and all of a sudden the knee shoots in, why does the knee shoot in? Because the glute is weak or the glute's not firing and the hip flexor is strong. So they come here and the knee goes choo to kind of engage the hip flexor and the quad opposed to staying in a good position for glute strength. It's like finding other muscles to activate when not other Yeah, muscles. so you, you get into a certain deal, your body will have a hierarchy and all of a sudden, if this is strong and this is weak, then it'll go, uh, but then all of a sudden you fuck up your shoulder. Right. And then you rupture pecs and like, that's the worst part, so. I like dumbbells a lot. Never seen those before. Kettlebells? Like, like what? No, not the kettlebells, the uh... Oh, center mass bells? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Does that change uh, it up though? Uh, they're just a different style of loading. So Sornex makes them and they're, they, Bert sent them, who's a CEO for Sornex, sent us a bunch of them and we play with them and like them. Uh, I really like them for like uh, single arm swings and also some presses. Um, I usually, uh, we only got up to 70s. So uh, my marker for success for any gym is how heavy your dumbbells are. So if you don't have at least 150s, I'm like, oh, this isn't a real gym. So we got 150s over there and then we got 130s and 40s and 50s. and. So yeah, so heavy dumbbells have always been good for us. So cool. All right, any other questions? We're good. Thank you.